I know I'm probably super late to the party and the trend has probably passed, but I'm gonna be doing some Aura style nails and I'm gonna make them tropical. And I wasn't sure whether I actually wanted to do this style, but when I found the colors that I wanted to use, I felt like they were screaming for this style. So I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. So it's a little subdued, but I wanted it that way. I didn't want it to be too contrasting and I absolutely love the way it turned out. So if you want to see how I do this aura style nail with some nail art stamping, stick around and we'll get into it. The colors I'll be using for today's Manny are from Vivid Glam Co. These are from the Finial Straw Collection. I believe they released in maybe December. So they are holiday themed, but to me, at least these colors screamed tropical. So I don't even care that they're holiday themed. I absolutely love the tropical vibes I got with this. For this Manny, I'm going to be using my Vivid Glam Co. Dip Basin Activator as well as the Delicate Gel, which is a gel basin top coat in one. Now Vivid Glam Co. does call their Dip Base the glue and then the activator is the Activate if you get confused by the bottle. And the actual dip top coat, that's actually called Gloss. So just wanted to call that out just in case there was any confusion. So I'm starting off with applying a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail and then I will dip into short fuse which is the orange so that's going to be the base of my nails and I'm not going to start with the aura style just yet. I'm just going to do a plain base of short fuse for my index middle and pinky fingers and then for my second layer that's when I'll do the aura style but I just want that base of the orange on which you can see it's pretty full coverage. So I thought if I did the aura style on my first layer, if I dipped over it, you wouldn't really see it because I just cover it up. So I might as well just wait till I do my second layer before I do that style. The other thing I could have done if I wanted my aura to be more prevalent and stand out a little bit more is I could have done my first dip in short fuse and then scrubbed in my hot pink, which is ornament placement disorder. And then for my second layer, instead of dipping in short fuse, I could have dipped in clear and then scrubbed in a second layer of the hot pink. And that would be a really great way to get the hot pink to stick out more. But I just wanted something super subtle just because I wasn't sure about how I felt about the aura style. So that's kind of why I did it this way. Oh, and I should also mention I did make, I forgot to stir my powder before I dipped in. So I felt like the pigments didn't mix really well. So I wanted to make sure that I stirred it before I continued dipping on with the rest of my fingers. finished with my first layer and I made sure I dusted off the excess powder using my dust brush so now I'm going in with layer two. So for my second layer I'm starting off with my dip base and I'm applying a thin even layer to my entire nail making sure I have it fully covered and then once I've got that complete I'm going to go ahead and dip into short fuse which is my orange that's going to be my base. I'm tapping off the excess powder after I dip into the jar, but I'm not gonna dust off just yet. But I do wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up my cuticle area, making sure I don't have any excess product on my skin because that could cause lifting. So I'm using my precision tool. This one is from Vivid Glam Co as well. And so for a scrub ombre, you do wanna find that sweet spot of your dip base isn't completely wet, but it's not totally dry. So I'm kind of at that point. So I've got this stiffer, eyeshadow brush you do want something a little more compact and stiff 
and I'm just dipping it into my hot pink, this ornament placement disorder, and I'm just tapping it into the powder because I don't want to scrub and displace the orange. So I start by tapping it to get some of that pigment in. And then when I think it's safe enough, I will start scrubbing in a little bit more. And what that's doing is really scrubbing in the pigment into the orange. So this only works if you have a lighter color that you're scrubbing a darker one into or it could be a darker into a lighter but it has to be two contrasting colors but you can see I'm kind of scrubbing that in and you can see that color really taking into that orange creating that sort of oral look so I'm going to continue on do this for the the middle finger and pinky as well and then I want to go ahead and cap them all in clear because I would hate to do that work and then file through the aura nail <laughs> I finished up with my Aura Nail and I only stuck with that one layer because I liked the way that the hot pink mixed in with the orange. I didn't feel like I needed anything more than that. So I just stuck with the one layer. But like I kind of mentioned before, if you do want an additional layer, I would recommend dipping in clear and then scrubbing in the hot pink in that rather than dipping in the orange again because the orange will cover up the work you did in your first layer. So now I'm going ahead and capping in clear. So I'm applying a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail. I'm dipping in clear and that's gonna protect my design when I go to file and buff. Vivid Glam Co's Crystal Glass, which is their clear, is one of my favorites to use. I never have any issues using it and it's just so easy. I'm gonna make sure my nails are completely dry and then I'm gonna go in with a stiff scrub brush and I'm gonna scrub off any excess clear. I find this is the key to not get any graininess or bubbling when you're using clear is to make sure you're scrubbing off that excess powder. I'm going to go ahead and activate my nails and I like to apply a generous amount of activator because that's what's going to harden my dip powder and make it ready to file and buff. So I want to make sure it's getting into all the layers of the dip powder. And I'm doing this before I get into my glitter because an activated nail glitter will not stick to it and I don't want to risk contaminating my solid nail with a stray glitter because that would annoy me. So that ensures that I don't have any contamination. Now that my solid nails are activated, I'm going to go ahead and get into my glitter. So this is Glitters Everywhere and it's such a beautiful color and it pairs so well with the colors in this collection. So this isn't a super chunky glitter. It's got small, fine, and medium glitters in it. So it's really easy to use. There aren't any large hex pieces that make it more difficult to work with, but I will still be using my chunky glitter method for application.
So what I mean by chunky glitter method is that I applied a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail but instead of dipping into the glitter I went ahead and poured over the glitter. So I'm pouring into my Chaos Gemerald by Chaos Concepts. So this is a 3D printed flexible item that helps catch the powders and the glitters and it makes it super easy to use for pour over method. Since these aren't super large glitter pieces, I don't really have pieces sticking up, but I like to just press down with my finger just in case, just to make sure everything's laying flat, which they were, just because I don't want to end up filing through any of those glitters. Because colored glitters, when you file through them, they're usually silver in the middle, so usually you can tell when you file through a glitter because it kind of sticks out. So I'm gonna do the same process for my ring finger as well. So I applied a thin even layer of dip base to my ring finger and I'm pouring over that glitter into my Chaos Gemerald over my nail. And you may notice I start pouring in the Chaos Gemerald first and then I start pouring over my nail. So I like to pour over first just so if there's any larger glitter pieces at the top of the jar, they kind of fall out first before I pour over onto my nail. So I'll go ahead and clean up around my cuticle area, make sure those glitters are laying flat, and then that there aren't any sticking up over my cuticle area. For my second layer, I'm gonna pour the rest of my jar into my Chaos Gemerald. I wanna make sure that I give it a good shake and that brings more of the glitter pieces to the surface because the larger glitter pieces are heavier and they do tend to sink. So I wanna make sure that I'm bringing them all to the surface because I want for my second layer to where I pick up the most amount of glitter. So I'm going ahead and dusting off the excess powder on my thumb. So you can see here, I've got good coverage, but not full coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my finger upside down and I'm gonna lay it flat into the glitter. And that will ensure I pick up the most amount of glitter and that will give me the full coverage I want for my second layer. Doing it this way ensures you reduce bulk because if I did a whole bunch of larger glitter pieces on my first layer, and then a bunch of larger pieces on my second layer, that would be a lot of bulk that creates. So being able to pour over, you get less of the larger pieces and then laying your flat in for your second layer when you pick up the larger pieces, that reduces bulk. Invincible. I went ahead and capped my glitter nails in clear, activated and filed and buffed all my nails off camera. So here's how the Manny's looking, super quick and easy. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of stamping and I was super excited when I found this plate that I have in my stash. So this is the Maniology Manny by Me 051. So this is a subscription box plate. So unfortunately, unless you have a subscription to the Manny by Me, you won't have access to this. But I was excited because this has hibiscus flowers on it and I thought it would be perfect for my tropical theme. So I'm going to start with just my index finger just to make sure I like it and to decide whether I wanted to do the rest of my nails. But I do need something tacky for my stamping to adhere to because my dip powder nails are clean and dry. So I'm going ahead and using my Vivid Glam Co. Delicate Gel. So I'm applying a thin even layer of that to my nail. But since this is a gel base and top coat, I still want it to be tacky. So I'm only going to cure it for 30 seconds in my UV LED lamp because I don't want to fully cure it. 
Now that I've cured my gel, I'm going to get into my stamping. So I'm using Bam White for my stamping polish. This one's from Maniology as well. So I'm just going to apply a generous amount of that polish to the design that I want on the plate. And then I'm going to take my scraper card and scrape down at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to take my stamper and I'm going to roll it onto the design to pick it up. If there's any excess design, I'll use the scraper card to remove it from the jelly stamper. And then once I've got that ready, I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want to place it on the nail and then press down to transfer the design from the stamper onto my nail. You can see I made a huge mess with it but I'll clean that up at the end. I did decide I did like the way it looked so I'm going to continue on and do the same thing for my middle finger and pinky. <laughs> I know it's looking super crazy and messy, but I'm not gonna clean up the excess polish just yet. I'm going to go ahead and top coat my nails. So I'm using my delicate gel as my top coat. And whenever I'm using gel, I like to cap my free edge first before I go in with the rest of my nail. So I capped my free edges. I'm gonna go ahead and top coat those nails. I'm gonna cure them for a full 60 seconds. And then here's what I'm gonna do for cleanup. I've got a lint-free wipe and some acetone, and I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe away that excess stamping polish and I can do this because the top coat is pretty strong as you you know if you've tried to soak off a mani you know that it takes quite a while in acetone to be able to soak it off so the little bit I'm doing of wiping isn't going to affect my top coat so I can just easily clean it rather than having to go with a brush once I've got that all cleaned up, I want to finish off my mani by rehydrating my cuticles. So I have my Scales of Mermaid cuticle balm. This is in the scent Sippin' Until Sunrise. And I definitely need it now because the acetone is so drying on my skin. So I want to make sure that I'm rehydrating everything and making it look just fresh and clean. So I'm going to make sure I rub that in really well. And I love the balms because they're just so hydrating. They leave my skin not greasy at all. And they just are really healing as well they just feel really nice on your skin so that pretty much wraps up today's mani i had a lot of fun doing this tropical mani even though it's like 50 degrees here and i know some places are still getting snow but hey i can dream of tropical weather right so i hope this video was helpful i hope you enjoyed it and if you did i'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up 
It lets me know to continue creating content like this, and it also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.